Hi there. Welcome to That Board Game Show. My name is James Wood, and today I'm going to show you the cooperative dice game Flatline. In Flatline, our objective is to rescue these six patients. We have one, two, three, four, and then five, six off to the side over here. I'm going to show you today a solo playthrough of Flatline to give you a sense of how it plays. And the solo game is played out almost identical to a two-player game, except that I, as a solo player, will be rolling all of the dice. So I've got two sets of dice here in front of me, one for one player and one for another player. The first thing we do at the beginning of the game is we take one die from each player's supply in the two-player game, this is specific, and we set those aside. We'll possibly be able to get those back as we play. Let me explain what we're doing in Flatline. The theme here is that we are medics on a spaceship, and the spaceship has had bombs exploding all over the place. In fact, that is a follow-on from a previous game called Fuse. I've done a playthrough for that as well. I'll leave a link down below. And in that game, your objective is to defuse bombs as quickly as you can by rolling dice and assigning them to various cards. In this game, we're following on from that theme. And the general idea is a lot of those bombs that we were trying to defuse previously have gone off. And now this ship is crumbling around us. And people are being rushed in from all over the ship to this med bay and we are now the medics who will be rolling these dice in real time and assigning them to the various patients on the board. So these areas here, each of these tiles represents a different patient. And these symbols are the things we need to do in order to treat them. How we do that is we roll dice and then we assign those dice to the matching symbols on the patient tiles. I've got the four patients on the board here, and then two off to the side. This is a training difficulty. The more difficult you want to make it, the more tiles you play. And to win the game, you have to treat all the patients before the ship runs out of energy. So at the start of each round, we'll be removing one of these energy cubes, representing the ship's power systems shutting down, you know, turn after turn, because these bombs have gone off and now it's all coming to pieces. We have these two recharging stations, which will allow us to buy ourselves some more time. So if we feel like we're not able to attend to the patients with the dice we've rolled, we can assign dice here instead, and then take these cubes from over here and put them back into the ship's energy supply over there. And you'll see off to the side here as well, I've got a tablet with the Renegade Games app. This game is published by Renegade Games. And the app is basically the timer. Now, you don't have to use the app. There is this little turn reference card over here. You would typically give this to one player. And that player would be the chief medical officer. It's their job to make sure everyone's doing the right rounds and the player's proceeding in the correct order. I'm going to set that aside for now because today I am using the app. And what the app will do is it helps us remember what round we're in and it is a one minute timer. So how the game is played is we play it over a series of rounds. And each round we go through a series of phases. And with that, let me actually show you how the game plays and I'll explain the rounds as I perform them. So the first thing I'll do is I'll bring that die back. I'm just gonna group all these dice together off to the side there. And let's fire up the app. So click the big play now button. And the first thing we do is lose power. Take the leftmost power cube from the power meter and remove it from the board. So we go over to here, the leftmost. You'll see I've got the one or two player game power meter here. There are several different power meters in the box depending on the number of players you're playing with. So we'll remove the leftmost power cube that gets removed from the game. We now move on to step three of the first round. Add emergencies. Below the power cube that was just removed is a number. In this case, number five. Reveal that number of emergency cards and add them face up next to the board. 
So drawing the first emergency card, we'll see it has a blue border. So it goes over here into this blue area, which is referred to as the emergency area. These are the imminent emergencies that are happening around the ship that we have to attend to. I'll explain what that is when we come to it. Drawing the second card of five, this is a orange border. So this goes over here into the stat area which are also emergencies that need to be attended to, but they're less critical, they're less pressing than these ones. And our second card is another blue emergency, and another blue emergency, and one more, and that is another orange stat emergency. Okay. So you'll see, just like the patient cards over here, these have all got little spaces for dice to go in. If ever you see these question marks and then an equals sign, that means three of the same die has to go there, three of the same die face. When it's very specific, it's obviously the die faces that show. And then sometimes you'll see they have these question marks without the equals sign, so any die can go into those three spaces. Okay, so the next step is we roll the emergency dice. We pick up these two white dice off to the side here. And these will now determine which emergencies trigger off. So let's roll those up. And we've got a four and a six. So luckily for us, nothing happened. This is the first round of the game. Things are still a little bit calm. There's just some distant minor explosions happening. Nothing too chronic has happened. But let's say that a one had rolled, for instance. Then we would trigger off this card. And this card says, place a lockdown tile on the reroll track. So you would take one of these lockdown tiles, which we have this little supply of off to the side there, and that would go onto the reroll track over here. And the way that works is while we're playing during the one minute real time part of the game, we'll be rolling our dice and the only way to reroll them is to take one of your dice, place it here, and then you can re-roll as many of the others as you want. If we had rolled that one and triggered off this thing, then for this round, that option is not available to us. That didn't happen though, let's put that back on the four, and move on to the phase four, planning phase, discuss a strategy for the round, determine priorities and make a plan of action, start the countdown when you are ready. So if there were more people at the table today, I would be chatting to them, we'd be saying, okay, what do we need to do? So let's do that. Um, I'll discuss with myself what I think we need to do. So I can see that basically all the patients need to be attended to, and some are going to be easier than others. You will notice these little icons next to the different levels and those represent how many players and what players need to work on that patient. So if you see a symbol like this, that means one player alone, only one player can assign dice to that area. If you see one like this, all players have to assign the relevant dice to that area. And if playing solo, like I am, then I have to assign two dice of different colors from the two different colors I'm playing with to that area. Um, what else do we have? We've got this orange one over here, which is a very similar thing. This is more than one player needs to contribute over there. There's also these little emergency things. Again, I'll explain how those work when they happen, when they become relevant. So at the moment, I don't have a particular plan, a particular strategy. I'm just going to start rolling the dice and seeing what I can deal with. One thing that needs to be dealt with are these stat cards over here, which I just remembered is actually more critical over here than over here. So these are representing, these emergencies over here are representing minor problems that we have to deal with on the ship. This stat area, are highly critical things that we have to attend to. Because if we do not attend to these two cards this round, then they will get flipped face down. We'll take them and flip them face down and place them over here in this red zone. If we're playing with three or five players and it gets to there, 
game over. That's it. The ship has exploded, and nobody survived. Playing with one or two players, we have a little bit more leeway. We have one more emergency that we can survive. So these orange stat things here need to be a focus, because they will prevent us from losing the game prematurely. And obviously, the primary focus is saving the patients. So I need to try and clear these out, and I need to attend to the patients over here. So with that all said, let's pick up all these dice. OK. Get ready to give them a roll. And we'll tap the big start countdown button. And now things are going to get frantic. And go. OK, so now I have to decide very rapidly where to put things. So let's see, I've got a blue and a blue and an orange and a green. So that is boom. That is that card taken care of. You'll see any player's dice can be contributed to those. Um, over here, that would have to be one player. Oh dear, okay, there's an orange and a yellow. We can assign those over there. Uh, all players, all player dice have to contribute to that. Let's see, we can put a, oh my goodness, okay, we can put an orange from that one. And then where you see two on the same here, it has to be two different players assigning to those different things. Um, and we are running out of time. Okay, we can assign those two over there, and that over there. And can I assign, okay, just any old three dice can go over there and deal with that. And with six seconds to spare, whew, that was pretty frantic. And time's up. So, as you see, you could do that without the app. Somebody could just sit with a stopwatch, a timer, timer on your phone, Almost anything could work. Naturally, the app does make it a bit more fun. And now we resolve these cards. So the first thing we do is we resolve the cards around the edge here. We take any stats that we successfully dealt with, and we move them over to this triage side of the board over here. We tuck that under like so. And now on this side, we have a special benefit that that will provide for us. So we take these two and we slip them underneath there. And let's see what they'll do for us. This allows us to ignore one emergency die to use after rolling or play before rolling and only roll one die. So during the emergency die phase, we can discard this card to either ignore one die after we rolled or to only roll one die for that round. And this one over here, move one discarded energy cube onto the first space on the power supply. That is incredibly helpful. Because what that lets us do is that lets us recharge this ship's energy over here and buy us some more time to rescue all the people. And you'll see, in this first one, we discarded a cube and we had to draw five cards. So now would be a pretty terrible time to play that because then we'd be drawing five more emergency cards. So I'm going to hang on to that card, and I'll discard that to replenish our energy supply when it's down on this two or this three, thereby mitigating the number of crises we have to attend to. Okay, we didn't attend to any of these more minor emergencies, so those will just stay there. And these can build up on you. It can be tempting to attend to these because they can be quite negative during the game, but they're not going to lose you the game. They're just going to they just represent minor setbacks. So it's a bit risky to focus too much energy on these cards and thereby not have the dice you need to attend to the stats and the patients. So let's move on to the next thing. We've resolved that. We'll now resolve any dice out here. So we will take the dice off, send them back over there, and we covered up that. We grab one of these tiles over here and we pop that over there representing that that is one step closer to fully treating that patient and getting them fit and ready enough to get off the ship before it explodes. And the next one over here, you'll see this one had these two dividing lines over there. And so one player's dice had to go on this side and a different player's dice had to go on this side. And wherever you see two icons like this, there's an orange and a white here. That doesn't have to be both. That's either an orange or a white die going in that area. So we'll take these back off to there, grab a tile, cover that up. 
And move over to here. Again, this one had to be two different people. And we'll cover that one up. And as we can see, this one is now pretty close, although it needs a lot of dice over here. But it's getting closer to being healed. We only need two more treatments on here. This one also is probably quite easy because there's only three strips that we need to treat. Okay, we didn't attend to either of the recharge stations. Again, those are good to do when you're going to recharge to a low number of cards you have to draw the next round. The next step is to turn the life support dial. Okay. And that is now plugged into this patient over here. And these will basically represent what happens when that patient is fully treated. So I'll get to that once we've fully treated someone. Back over to the app, we tap on the big start next turn button. Boop. And start over again. Remove an energy cube, boom. Draw three cards from the emergency deck over here. Adding another one to that stat area. Actually, let's put this over here so I don't have to reach quite so far. And then that one over there, another stat, oh dear. And then a slightly more minor emergency. These go off to the side. Uh, we've done that, we've done that. We now roll the emergency dice. Remembering we've got this card that could let us ignore one. We've got a three and a four. Okay, so we've got two emergencies triggering off this turn. Let's see what those are. This one is move the leftmost energy cube from the power meter to one of the recharging stations. Hmm, it's actually not too bad, so I'll let that one trigger off. We take one of these, representing the ship's energy depleting somewhat more. But it goes over here, you see, it doesn't get discarded out of the game. So we can get that back. So that's just something going offline. And then this one over here is rather terrible. That would mean one player has to lose two dice. So they have to take two dice of one color and discard them off to the side. That's now less dice we have to work with. So now's probably a really good time to use this card over here to prevent this emergency die from triggering off. So we don't have to lose those two dice just yet. And now I know that I probably want to focus on getting rid of this one because that's gonna be quite a problem if that keeps on happening. We're just gonna keep losing dice and our one shot at ignoring it is now gone. So that gets discarded off to the side there. And we will plan our next turn. So let's plan, let's plan. So this one we now know we want to attend to. Um, we've got two emergencies over here, which I just spotted are completely invisible to my overhead camera due to these card sleeves that I have everything in. These do not come with the game. These are an optional add-on that I have added to this because you're handling these cards a lot. So this just protects them, keeps them nice and minty fresh. This one needs a pink and a blue die. And this one over here needs any three dice. And remember, we have to do it into those, otherwise they go over here and possibly lose us the game. So now, ah, and now would probably be quite a good time to hit up this recharging station to get our cubes back over here because it's a three and a two. So those are decent numbers to recharge. Okay, so focusing on Focusing on recharging, getting rid of this, and attending to those. The patients this round might have to take a back seat, unfortunately. Um, yeah, let's see how we do. Okay, so ready, and get my dice ready to go. Start countdown, and roll. Let us see, ooh dear. Okay, so anything can go there. So I just need to reserve any two dice. Anyone can contribute to this over here. In the two-player game, we only have to do the top row, fortunately, so that is that taken care of. We need a pink and a blue, so that's that taken care of. Let's see if we can attend to anyone. Do we have a, a blue die? Let's see, no, we don't have any other blue dice. Ooh, dear, time is running out. Okay, we can go with a yellow and a yellow for those two. 
of different things over there. That's that one dealt with. Um, that's all players have to contribute. Uh, this player can contribute over here. We're running out of time. I need to make sure I have three dice. Okay, that's three dice over there and two dice over there with 10 seconds to spare. So let's pause that in countdown. Yes, because I planned ahead, so I knew exactly what I needed to do. So now we can resolve these. These three dice come back over here. This emergency has been averted everted, averted, and it goes in over here, and what does that do? Under control, that will allow us to discard one of these cards, so I'll hang on to that for now, and once I see one of these being a problem, like this, I can rather use this card to get rid of it instead of assigning dice over there. We will bring this card over to the triage area, and that will allow us to not turn the life support dial, which could be quite helpful if we're about to treat a patient. And this one, we'll bring the dice back, and this card simply gets discarded. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Now we've dealt with all the cards, we now move on to the patients and the recharge stations. So these dice will come home. And these two energy cubes, bleep, bleep, get plugged back in, we go find some batteries lying around in the ship, or we reprogram the solar panels or something to give us a bit of extra juice. And this patient got our full attention this turn. Everyone else got ignored, sadly. So that one gets treated over there. This one gets treated over here. And now we only have two more steps to go to get this patient fully taken care of. So that could be a plan for next round. And we now move on to there, rotate the life support dial. And move on to the next turn. And we'll just continue like that round after round. I think I'll play a couple more rounds and let's see if I can get some of these patients treated. So I'm going to start blazing through this a bit faster now. We will remove energy cube draw three cards, one into the stat area over there, which is going to need a green and an orange die. Another one in the stat area over there, which needs all players to contribute any one die. And third card is in the emergency area. Okay, we've done that, we've done that. Roll the emergency dice, do, 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 do. And we got a two and a five. So only one thing happened this time around. Let's see, turn the life support dial one space. So now, as you saw, we've been turning this from one patient to another. Now, this makes us turn it just one tick, tick. And now, if we were to treat this patient this turn fully, then whatever the life support dial is plugged into on that pod over there will trigger off the matching space, which in this case is not very good. So this symbol here would prevent us from being able to use that reroll track to, whoopsie, reroll our dice, which probably isn't too terrible. So I don't think we have to worry about that too much. Nothing bad happened over here. We caught a break there. And we've got two more dire emergencies to deal with. But I think I'm going to try focus on treating a patient this round. That's going to be the plan so that you can see what happens when we finish that. So let's pick up these dice, which have a mind of their own today. Start the timer and away we go. Okay, so let's see if we can deal with this guy. We'll take a blue and a pink over there. Remembering it has to be one color and we won't be able to do it unless we do a reroll. So let's try a reroll. I'll show you how a reroll works. So we'll take one of these pink die over here. We'll keep the yellow because we're looking for a white. We'll reroll all of these for purple and we got the white. There we go. So now we'll take those and we'll pop them over there which means next round we won't be able to do that reroll. Oops, I was going to go there. And 
Let's see what else. Ooh, we are running out of time. Okay, so anyone can go there. Let's just put a little bit of green and an orange. Deal with that. Let's see about dealing with these problems over here. Deal with that patient over there. We are running out of time. Anyone can just put anything over there. And, whoop, oh, over there. Woo, just in the nick of time on that one. Phew. And I had a dialect over. Oh, bothersome. Oh well, not much I could have done with one die anyway. So we will resolve our cards that will come over to here. And suddenly you will see we only have four slots and we're about to resolve another stat card. So before we resolve that one, we can play one of these. So let's see, what do we want to do here? We can recharge something. We can say, do not turn the dial. All players can change one die to any side. So those are helpful while playing. Let's just play this one, which will allow us to discard one of these. And we'll discard, what do we want to get rid of? Let's see, move the leftmost power meter to the recharging station. Yeah, let's get rid of that one. So that one that moves the energy away, we'll get rid of that. Then we'll resolve this. Bring this card over here, slide it in there. And then we can immediately use that one. No triggers with a red light are activated for treating a patient, which we're about to do. We're about to finish treating this patient and it would have triggered off a red light, which we can now avoid, thanks to attending to that emergency over there. We did nothing else over here. We treat this patient, ignoring that red light, which would have stopped us being able to use the reroll function. So we take two tiles and we pop them one, two, like so. And now you can see that that patient is fully treated. All the lights on their little emergency pod have blinked off because they've been taken care of. So now we pick that up. All of those go back to the supply over there. Oop. We send this patient off on their merry way. They are happy and healthy and very grateful for our support. We now bring in a new one, gets rushed into the med bay and plugged into the station. And they need lots of orange dice. My goodness, that's interesting. Okay, so this one also gets attended to. Let's pop a tile over there, pop a tile over there. Bring back this die from the recharging station. And we've done that, we've done that. Turn the last portal. And this over here, if we could treat this patient in this round, this allows us to give one additional die to every player. So that's how we can get those dice we set aside at the beginning of the game back into our supply. That would be a good patient to focus on for next turn. And let us do that. Okay, so we'll play another round. We'll discard the energy cube. The ship is losing more power. We will draw two cards from the emergency deck over here, adding one. Now you'll see we dealt with this card earlier. So we always fill in the leftmost available space. We draw one more, which is another blue one. So that is nice. We don't have any critical emergencies to deal with, but these are starting to build up a little bit. Now we will roll the emergency dice and see what happens. What is going wrong on the ship today? Nothing too bad. Okay, what is this one? We have any patient card triggers that have a red light and are currently connected to the life support dial activate immediately. Well, isn't that rather fortunate? Look, no red lights are connected to the life support dial. So that was a very uneventful emergency phase. That is the kind of emergency phase you want to see. Let's see, okay, so we want to attend to this patient. That needs to get our prime focus because then we can get those extra dice back. Um, now would be as good a time as any to discard this card and place one of these energy cubes back in the supply. We find some 
excess batteries lying around somewhere and go plug them into the mainframe. And let us see. Yep, that patient I think needs to get our prime attention today. And maybe start working on this one over here. And any leftover dice we can just assign to these. Okay, plans have been made and start countdown. Boom. Roll them dice and see where they need to go. Okay, we've got a pink guy over there. Uh, oh dear, we do not have, okay, so that's not a good idea. We don't have the orange. Okay, so let's see if, if black re-rolls these not dice, serious. try and get an orange, which we failed to do, that's not good. Okay, so let's just see if we can do this one. So now two players have to do this. Put that white one over there. Uh, blue, we have no blue because I just gave up my blue, so we're gonna have to re-roll if we want to attend to this patient. Um, we will set aside, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. That could be blue or a green. With the green over there, we have no orange. Oh my goodness, okay, so re-roll everything. Running out of time, there's that orange we need, yay. Actually, there's the orange under that. Oh no, this is bad. Okay, so we'll, uh, and we've run out of time. Right, so that is sometimes how it can go. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we dealt with one line on that patient and not much else. So no cards got dealt with and we could have used a whole bunch of those excess dice that I didn't get to assign anywhere on these emergencies here. But I got too focused on this patient. So, hmm, dearie, dearie. Oh well, let's take those back. We did some good at least on that round. And pop that in over there and sometimes that's what you need to also bear in mind is not getting too fixated on what you're trying to do but rather work with what the dice give you and just use all the resources that you have available to attend to what you can rather than trying to customize things to do exactly what your plan was sometimes your plans need to get turned on their head and you need to just roll with it <laughs> pun intended so We've dealt with that, we've dealt with that. We turn the life support dial. And it would still be good to treat this patient because one player at least can get their leftover die back. We'll click on start next turn. Remove the energy cube. Zoop. And draw two cards. One card in the stat area over here, which is a perfect way, if we deal with that, for all players to get their dice back. That is the one we want to deal with. So any four dice over there will deal with that. One more card is a blue one. And this is now really getting filled up. Right, we've dealt with that, we've dealt with that. Roll the dice. We have two and three. Let's see, turn the life support dial one step. That is okay. Drink, not that there's anything we can do about it, if it wasn't. And any patient cards that have a red light and are currently connected to the life support dial activate immediately. Oh dear. That card is called bad timing and it couldn't be more apt because we just turned this one step because of that card to there. We didn't use that and we didn't use that. Okay. So now this red light will trigger, which means both players, both dice, have to lose one off to the supply there. So now dealing with this card is just going to get us back to where we were at the beginning of the round. Oh dearie. So now planning phase. We could still plan on this one over here. Try to get another patient treated. As you can see, we are about halfway through and we've been recharging that. So we're more than halfway through and we've only treated one patient. So things are not looking too peachy. Let's see if we can turn that around by picking up our dice. Starting the countdown. 
and away we go. There are all the orange dice we need. So that is going to get our focus over there. But let's treat this one because now we've got everything we need. That card over there. We can deal with this card over here with ease, actually. Let us deal with these more tricky ones over here. We'll do that one over there and that one over there. And we've got all these. That is four dice of any color. Boop. Job done. That was a fairly easy round compared to the last one. End countdown. Yes, I do want to end now. Right, resolve the cards, bring this over here. We will immediately play that to get our one die back for all the players. Yes, thank you very much. We will resolve this, whoopsie, patient over here. And put a line over there and bing, bing, bing. Huzzah, we have treated another patient. Let us remove all of those. That patient gets wheeled out of the med bay. And this last patient gets wheeled in. And oh my goodness, that's going to take a lot of work. Wowie. Right, that's going to now have to take all our focus, it would seem. That patient was clearly standing right next to one of the bombs that went off because they are in a pretty sad state. My word. Goodness me. Okay, so this patient we have dealt with over here. Two lines get covered up there. They are getting nicely mended. And we've dealt with that. We've dealt with that. We turn the life support dial. And now this patient would be quite a good one to treat if we can this round because this green light over here would mean we can add one of these tiles to any patient. So if we can treat this patient fully now, we can then take this and cover up one of these really difficult spots. So there's something to plan for. I'll say start next turn, remove this energy cube, and draw three cards. We have a blue one, and now, as you can see, we have all six spots filled up. So one would think, well, that's it, you've filled up the track. Not quite. In this game, we have two lines on the track. So now this can fill up all the way again, and if we roll a one, we have to deal with both of these emergencies. So things do start to escalate quite rapidly near the end of this game. Righto. Drawing the second card is another blue one. Oh my goodness, things are really starting to fall apart on this ship. And the third one is another one. My, my, my. Wow. Okay, so things are going to get interesting when these dice get rolled, which we're about to do. We get a four and a three, so not quite as bad as it could have been. First, we resolve the top row, which has, what do we have here? Move a triage card to the stat section. Oh, bothersome. So one of these triage cards we dealt with earlier goes back to the stat section. Let's see, that one is probably easier to deal with, so we'll put that one over there. Slide that back in. Next card is any patient card triggers that have a red light. Uh, activate immediately. Ooh, dear. Again. How does that keep happening? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, deary, deary. So that's two dice off to the side. Our medics are getting rather worn out and tired, and they're losing focus. And lastly, we draw one more emergency card. What do we have here? This is an unexpected hindrance. An unexpected hindrance crops up, and it's another blue one. Now you'll see we just added it to the row we just resolved, but because you resolve these top to bottom, this card will only get attended to in a future round where we roll a four. And now we need to treat someone. I really think this one needs to get our full focus because then we are essentially getting an extra treatment line 
as a bonus. That, and we should probably try a recharge to get that one more turn, or actually we should hold off on recharging until the bitter end when we'll only draw two cards later. So we have done our planning. I'm going to try work on this patient and let's hope I roll the dice I need, although that is a lot. Many, many, many dice. Although I don't want to treat this patient now because then we'll lose even more dice. Hmm, hmm. Oh well, let's see what we can do. Get our dice at the ready. Start the countdown and away we go. And of course, I roll a whole pile of orange dice. Not very helpful. Well, let's see, orange, green. Do we have any pink? We have no pink, that's not good. So we can't actually deal with that one right now. Let's see, maybe I do just do a recharge over here. No, nope, we still don't have any pink for that. Uh, do, 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 do. My goodness me, we do not have any of the dice we need. So let's put, oh, wow, this is horrible. Okay, I'm just gonna treat this one because I can, and I can't do much of anything else. So we'll treat them. We have no pink, we have no pink, we have two green, we have no blue. To that, oh, let's do that over there rather, like so. And we have none of that, we have none of that, we have none of that. oh my goodness. Okay, so let's just deal with some of these things. We can put two dice over there, both dice over there, both players, I mean. And we are out of time. That wasn't very good. Okay, resolving cards. We dealt with that stat that we dealt with earlier and then came up again. Which would have been rather helpful because it says, oops, I can pick it up. All players can change one die to any side. That would have been very useful to have had in that last round. Because if we could have got one die, one little pink die would have helped quite a lot over there. There well, so be it. Those come off and we discard that card. We treat this patient and they are almost completely treated. We treat this patient a bit more over here and they are far from being completely treated. And we've done that, we've done that. We move the life support out. Zzz, dee, and we would say start next turn. And I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. That gives you a very good visual on how Flatline plays. The multiplayer game obviously involves a lot more discussion and table talk and people trying to figure out what to do and shouting at each other, you know, put your dice over here, no, put your dice over there, all that kind of franticness that comes from a real-time game. And you've basically seen everything. I've shown you how these emergency spaces work. We've dealt with stats. The one thing you didn't see is if I hadn't dealt with one of these stats, placing it over there and one of the potential in-game triggers, but we were staying pretty well on top of that, Maybe I should have focused less on those and more on the patients. There's something to contemplate for future games. And I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below what your experience is of Flatline. If you've played it solo, if you've played it with your friends, and if you've played Fuse, the precursor to this game. I'll drop a link to the video for that down in the description below. And with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the show.